You want peace, you want power, we have both. We want peace, we desire. Power, we remember. We getting back to it. I'm telling you, man, our sisters and brothers, man, something's happening, man. It's just sparks, man. It's fireflies, man. Oh, we're going to talk about these stars, man. We're going to talk about these stars like we never talk about these stars, man. <laughs> We're going to get into some of these myths of the Cherokee. Love to AD. Y'all go check out AD. Click the link below, man. Subscribe to AD for the drop. Tell AD, man, much love. Because his brother is just, man, you know, firepower. When it comes to digging up these, uh, you know, great, great recons, man. This drop keeps flowing. We're going to get into this and the other drop that he dropped. On us uh, the other day, man, with the Hawa, the creator. A highly prominent name is that of Hawa. It was the most ancient name for the creator. And is easily identified from a Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold or to shape. Here we shall gather manifestation and declaration and account of the sowing and the dawning by framer and shaper. She who has born children and he who has begotten sons. So, you know, we're starting to see what they did. You know what I'm saying? We're starting to see what really went down. And they found us here, how they really, you know, sort of tore us apart. separated our energy you know when you think of G.O.D. like the Christian G.O.D. you are in a dog shit amount of trouble if you don't see the connection and have the connection and know that there is a connection between a framer which you call wisdom which Solomon is praying to Hawa, to the existence, to the Father, to the vibration. The shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling pottery from clay or sculpture from carved stone, thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. So the framer and shaper are the most frequently Mention gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. So when they found you here, copper colored people, and enslaved you here, the most frequently mentioned power involved in the creation of the world they found was to do with this couple, this union, this framer and shaper. With wisdom, better sheath, better sheath in the beginning. With wisdom, the most high created the world, the earth. With wisdom, with the framer, he created the earth with the framer, with wisdom. And now you're without it. So we're going to dig on some more of this framer and shaper because we're just talking shaper. We're just talking the Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold or to shape. We're just talking a prominent name is that of Hawa. And it was the most ancient name for the creator. And it's easily identified from a Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold or shape, to shape, shaper, who makes something by modeling molding pottery from clay or a sculpture from carved stone the framer and the shaper are the most frequently mentioned powers involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants their names implied at the creation involving involved giving frame and shape listen up 
Their names imply that the creation, that creation, that creation involved giving frame and shape. What is frame? What is wisdom? Refers to one who makes something by putting things together. Connecting it, connecting it, connecting it. Building a stone or adobe or a meal from various ingredients. Your mother puts it all together, don't she? With wisdom, with wisdom, with this energy that puts it all together, the Most High created the earth. Now what about this earth? So this pair of powers, God, powers, was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Vicio used their cliche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. Now they give you a new power and a new test. And Jesus is God. Zeus is God. Apollo, Apollyon. These are the titles for the divine couple. We're just talking a divine couple. Ex Mukani and Ex Piakok. Yemenes translated their cliche names Alam and Kajalam, simply mother and father. A more accurate translation for Alam, however, is she who born children. So now you hear Alam or Allah, all, all to bear children. So all, according to this manuscript, is a feminine all to bear children. So this bearing of children, the name of the male god Kajalam specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring. Very interesting, right? Only male offspring. Thus he who has begotten sons. Fray Bartolome de las Casas wrote in the 16th century that the peoples of Guatemala worshipped as their principal power the great father and the great mother that were in heaven above the barrier not the celestial people above the barrier apparently referring to this divine couple a divine couple Hanupupasim and Hanupukayoti yeah man oh man we're going to do some repetition like a mug around here to get this through your thick skulls of the brainwashing to break the spell and the curse of you still thinking about this Christian God, this dog, this serious. And you wake up to who you are with the same perspective of G.O.D. that they have of G.O.D. So you're still in the spell you're still that you're still looking for something to save you but your creator quiche quiche you keep hearing about these quiche people we're talking about root root is used here to describe the beginning or foundation of the author's words concerning the history of the quiche people the subsequent narrative is thus seen as a growing like a plant from this root so the author of these quiches <laughs> how deep it is man in digging with this quiche in the root the narrative is seen as growing like a plant from the root and what about the natural branches that were cut off and what about those that you know, apparently want to be grafted in to the root, to the branches. See, they can't get grafted into the root. So they're just trying to get gra grafted into the branch. But how can you be a branch boasting yourself above the root? And how can you be an unnatural branch boasting yourself above the natural branches and the natural root?
The authors at various times refer to the land, the nation, the capital city, and the people themselves as quiche, quiche. In the most modern orthography of the Maya languages, meaning many trees or forest. It's all about your trees. Man, we care about Jordans and and, and, and and Mother's Days. and You know what I'm saying? We care about bullshit, but we don't care about our trees. And our trees is what gives us the oxygen, the power. The power up many trees. Your trees are your crystal. They are your reminders, just like they put the crystal in the computers just for the memory. Today, imagine the crystals of your root and the memory of the root. The connectivity of your trees to the firmament. To the expanse. Man, that reminds me, man. I'm going to have to get this a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up. Let's go ahead and get this up, man. Actually, I don't even want that one. I don't even want that one. I don't even want that one. There we go. We're just talking the expanse of the sky. We're just talking the Ruach. We're just talking the Rakia, Rikia, the firmament, the vault of heaven. We're just talking about, you know what I'm saying? Psalms 96.10, he has fixed the earth firm, immovable. Thou hast fixed the earth, immovable, firm. Psalm 104, thou didst fix the earth on its foundation so that it can never be shaken. Oh, all it all plays. Trust me, it all plays. Hey, man. The vault, the vault, the vault. The vault of heaven is a crucial concept. The word firmament appears in the King James Version of the Old Testament 17 times, and in each case, it is translated from the Hebrew word rakia, which meant the visible vault of the sky. And you think you're on the ball spinning 1,100 miles per hour. You think you're on the ball spinning 1,100 miles per hour. Psalms 104.5 Thou didst fix the earth on its foundation so that it can never be shaken. But nope, you're on the ball earth, you know. The ball of heaven, what's that on the ball earth? I mean, it's like, where's up on the ball? Everywhere's up. Whoever's standing wherever they are. On that round ball, they point up, that's up. But see, it's not that complicated with us when we are. <laughs> Thou hast fixed the earth immovable. When we're immovable and firm, he has fixed the earth firm, immovable. When you're immovable, up is up for everyone. And everyone will see the energy, the power of the creator at the same time looking up. The word rakia comes from rakwa, meaning beaten out, beat out physically, beat out. The expanse of the sky in ancient times, brass objects were either cast in a form required or beaten into shape on an anvil. A good craftsman could beat a lump of cast brass into a thick bowl, thus Eluhu. Ask Joe, can you beat out raka, the vault of the skies, as he does? Hard as a mirror of cast metal. So Job is telling you that in the sky is a mirror of cast metal. Hard. A hard physical expanse. Thus Elihu asked Job, can you beat out Raka? Beat out. Beaten out. The vault of the skies as he does. Hard as a mirror of cast metal. Isaiah 45, 12, I with my own hands stretched out the heaven, Shamayim, and caused all their hosts to shine. Who by himself spread out the heavens, the vault of heaven reveals his handiwork physically. With my right hand, I form the expanse of the sky. Shamayim, Isaiah 48, 13. 
So you have a physical sky. I'm bringing all your orientation in because it plays when we're talking about Hawa, the creator, and it plays when we're talking about, oh yeah, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there, the myths of the Cherokee. Let's get to it. <laughs> How the world was made. Now we're getting babies out. We don't know, hey, you know, these, these people are compiling these myths. All this stuff, again, like the AD for all this drop. All the stuff I'm dropping right here is, man, courtesy of AD. You know what I'm saying? Courtesy of all the fam, man. And the copper thread. <laughs> we got a little, we got our copper thread rolling, man. It's, it's always uh, full of, full of drop, man. <laughs> man, love to the fam band, man. All right, so... You know, it's just great to, you know, you'll always find something that correlates with something that you're building on. You know I mean, that's what the wall of protection is all about, man. So that's what Drive Nation is all about. How the world was made. I know it's small. You got the link. Pull it up. Let's go. How the world was made. Oh, let me take a sip of my tea. Fall back, y'all. Yeah, fall back. Don't try to read these little words. Hurt your eyes. Just pull up the link or just, you know, pull it up later. Just listen to it. Listen to the drums, fall back. for the energy of redemption fight for that energy of redemption every day fight for the energy of redemption let's go <laughs> the earth is a great island floating in a sea of water bang <laughs> look man we're just talking about the myths of the Cherokee man All right. and how does this play with this Enoch that we get and how does it play with the scriptures and you know, the Psalms and, the, you know what I mean, the uh, Isaiah, all the Job. How does it play with the orientation you're getting all throughout the script by your prophets? Your Israelite prophets, your Cherokee Israelite prophets, your seeds of the creator, seeds of Adam. Let's go. The earth is a great island floating in a sea of water. Remember that turtle island? All right. And suspended at each of the four cardinal points by a cord hanging down from the sky vault. Wait. I told you your orientation plays when you dig into you, so-called Negro. Did he just say the earth is a giant floating giant island floating in the sea of water. So think about the earth all connected. Right? A giant island floating in the water. You're surrounded by water. And suspended at each of the four cardinal points by a cord hanging down from the sky vault. So do you see your orientation just by looking? Look, man, we didn't go nowhere into no conspiracy. <laughs> We're just looking into the midst of the chair. The breakdown from the chair. Dodging the hijack. Getting it right in your face bone. Sky vault. Right after we just pulled up. The vault of heaven. Rock yeah. Beating out. The word firmament. Appears 17 times in the so-called Old Testament. Can you beat out Raka, the vault of the skies, as he does? Framer and the Shaper, let's go. This is the beginning of the ancient traditions. This is back in the Papuva. Pull it up. This is the Quiche writings that they found here. All right, so if you want to dig in those King James translations, you might as well dig on this, you know what I'm saying, your Menes translations. 
You might as well get that Racino's translations of the Annals of the Costa Crowd while you're at it if you're going to dig on translations. When they're the ones calling this what it is. They're the ones saying what? This pair of gods, this pair of powers, this divine couple was so important that soon after the Spanish, soon after these motherfuckers invaded you, this mofo right here, Deviso, used their root names, their tree names, their quiche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament, the Creator. <laughs> Framer and Shaper. You're talking vaults. You're talking the expanse of the sky. What do they call the framer? <laughs> Creator of the green earth. That's the framer. That's wisdom. That's your mother. Mother earth. And creator of the blue sky. What does this have to do with the sky vault that he beat out with his handiwork? He what? I, with my own hands, stretched out the heaven, Shamaim, and caused all their hosts to shine. With my right hand, Isaiah 48, 13, I formed the expanse of the sky. I beat it out. If these verses were a mere illusion of a vault, so if this is just play play, they are surely much ado about nothing. <laughs> Shamayim comes from Shameh, a root meaning to be lofty. It literally means the sky. Other passages complete the picture of the sky as a lofty physical dome. God sitteth throne on the vaulted roof of earth Chaug, Chaug, whose inhabitants are like grasshoppers he stretched out the sky Shamayim like a curtain just google a tent because it's going to come in real handy when you deal with this divine couple in a divine house he stretched out the sky, Shamarim, like a curtain. He spreads them out like a tent to live in. Shahu literally means circle or encompass. So a lot of, you know what I'm saying, you know, folks that think they spin it. No disrespect because, you know, everyone has to come to this, man. So I don't ever want to create, you know what I'm saying, a, you know, a, a bitter road for you to travel if you in, in one particular place, you know what I'm saying. No one knows, man. We just got... You know, a, a place to share our theories, share our hypotheses, come together, be scientific, use repeatable, repeatable and observable, observable science. That's as scientific as we can be using repeatable and observable science. So, yeah, you know, you know, folks, I think they spin and they say, hey, man, look at this. Isaiah 40, see, circle, see, circle. That means sphere. That means you're on a spinning sphere, a spinning sphere. <laughs> Shaug, see? Shaug, circle. It must be spinning spherically, globularly. Nah, man, it means circle or encompassed. Encompassed what? Like a tent to live in? Vaulted roof of the earth? Stretched out like a curtain? He spreads them out like a tent to live in? Shaug, encompassed? Tent, encompassed. Tent and compass. By extension, it can mean roundness. Ah, as in a rounded dome. Yeah, yeah, because you want to be spherically round. But no, the roundness refers, or the encompassment, the round encompassment, the sky vault. <laughs> With my right hand, I formed the expanse of the sky. I formed it. I beat it out. Can you beat out Raka, the vault of the sky, as he does? Who's he? The creator of the blue sky. 
<laughs> and you have the creator of the green earth with wisdom. I created the earth in the beginning, but I sheep with wisdom. With my with my divine, you know what I'm saying? My peace, you know what I'm saying? Every your creator has his peace. That's wisdom. That's his peace. You know what I'm talking about. Right? You pray to your creator and say, hey, you know, let wisdom, let my mother, you know what I'm saying, rock with me. Let my mother rock with me. But wisdom belongs to no one else but the creator. So you ask the creator for wisdom. And wisdom's going to come at you the way she come at you to make sure you are in the vibration of the father. In the vibration of he who has begotten sons. And with those sons come seeds. And the seed traces the lineage. The seed traces you to your inheritance. The seed. The sons. The seed. With wisdom. Creator of the green earth and creator of the blue sky. Let's go back. How the world was made. Let's go. We just getting started. This is just the intro. Go, let's go. The earth is a great island floating in a sea of water and suspended at each of the four cardinal points by a cord hanging down from the sky vault, which is of solid rock. When the world grows old and worn out, the people will die and the cords will break and let the earth sink down into the ocean. And all will be water again. The Indians are afraid of this. When all was water, the animals were above in Galun Leo or Galun Lati. Beyond the ark, it was very much crowded and they were wanting more room. They wondered what was below the water. And at last, Dayu. Nisi, Beaver's grandchild, the little water beetle, offered to go and see if it could learn. It darted in every direction over the surface of the earth but could find no firm place to rest. Then it dived to the bottom and came up with some soft mud which began to grow and spread on every side until it became the island which we call the earth. It was afterwards fastened to the sky with four cords, but no one remembers who did this. At first, the earth was flat and very soft and wet. At first, the earth was flat and very soft and wet. The animals were anxious to get down and sent out different birds to see if it was yet dry, but they found no place to alight and came back again to Galoon. Lati. And last, it seemed to be time, and they sent out the buzzard and told him to go and make ready for them. This was the great buzzard, the father of all the buzzards we see now. He flew all over the earth, low down near the ground, and it was still soft when he reached the Cherokee country. Cherokee country. All right. You already know where that is, right? So called Negro. American copper color races found here, Cherokee country. So this is all to do with the you know started things. They say, man, this is how it started with us. He was very tired, and his wings began to flap and strike the ground. And wherever they struck the earth, there was a valley, and where they turned up again, there was a mountain. When the animal above, when the animals above saw this, they were afraid that the whole world would be mountain. So they called him back, but the Cherokee country remains full of mountains to this day. When the earth was dry, the animals came down, it was still dark. So they got the sun and set it in a track to go every day across the island from east to west. Oh no, now you're taught in your public schools and you know everywhere else you're ridiculed for thinking anything but this. When this is simply the myth of the Cherokee. Talking about, oh yeah, at first the earth was flat. When the 
when the earth was dry and the animals came down it was still dark so they got sun and they got the sun and set it in a track to go every day across the island from east to west so the sun is in a circuit whether it's going in a circle or a circuit from east to west whether we're talking space loops we'll get back to that fourth dimension space loops but yeah man now you think you know you're chasing the sun at some some tens of millions of miles per hour going around it <laughs> but you only see one side of it you only see one side of the moon come on man but they're in a circuit around you set it in track to go every day across the island from east to west just overhead just like uh just like joshua had the sun stand still because the sun was moving and he said sun chill out for a minute you get the perspective that the sun is small like enoch says 32 miles in diameter matching the moon 32 miles in diameter very close a few thousand miles away now this little sun is being set in track to go across every day it's like this you know this energy that keeps coming back in a circuit for you just overhead it was too hot this day and sit sit sitska sitska gilly the red crawfish had his shell scorched a right a bright red so that his meat was spoiled and the cherokee did not eat it the conjurers, the conjurers put the sun another hand breath higher in the air, but it was still too hot. They raised it another time and another until it was seven hand breaths high and just under the sky arch. It was, then it was right and they left it. So this was the conjurers call the high, the highest place. Gulk Wajine. Gene. I don't know how to say that, man. <laughs> The seventh height, because it is seven hand breaths, hand breaths, all right, above the earth. Every day, the sun goes along under this arch. No, you're going around the sun. The sun is gigantic, super ginormous, and it's 90, 93 million miles away, right? Does this sound like something 93 million miles away? Do you think, do you still think, do you still think you're spinning? Just stop right now. Tell me if you're spinning. Oh, no, you don't feel it, man, because of the, of the magical power of gravity. Our God, the force you must believe in to think that you're just stuck on a ball spinning 1100 miles per hour. The seventh height because it was seven hand breaths above the earth. Every day the sun goes along this arc. And returns at night on the upper side to the starting place. There is another world under this. Whoa. Please do tell. There is another world under this. And it is like ours and everything. Animals, plants, and people. Okay. Save the seasons are different. The streams that come down from the mountains are the trails by which we reach this underworld. The streams that come down from the mountains. Think about Mount Rorema in South America. The source of the Orinoco and the Amazon River. The streams that come down from the mountains are the trails by which we reach this underworld. And the springs at their heads are the doorways by which we enter it. But to do this one must fast and go to water and have one of the underground people for a guide. We know that the seasons in the underworld are different from ours because the water in the springs is always warmer in winter and cooler in summer than the outer air. Is this play play? When animals and plants were first made, we do not know by whom. Hmm. They were told to watch and keep awake for seven nights just as young men now fast and keep awake when they pray to their medicine wow pray to their medicine they tried to do this and nearly all were awake through the first night but the next night several dropped off to sleep and the third night others were asleep and then others until the seventh night of all the animals only the owl the panther 
and the one and one or two more were still awake. To these were given the power to see and to go about in the dark and to make prey of the birds and animals which must sleep at night. Of the trees, only the cedar. Listen up. Might be some drop. Uh, of the trees, only the cedar, the pine, the spruce, the holly, holly, and the laurel were awake to the end. And to them it was given to be always green and to be greatest for medicine. But to the others it was said, because you have not endured to the end, you shall lose your hair every winter. Yeah, man. Love to the fat band that got the drop on these trees, on this medicine. I know Teach dropped some great drop on that. Paco got some great drop on that. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I never heard this before. <laughs> that, you know, these trees stayed awake the longest. They endured. So they have endurance. They have an energy to them that endures. These cedars are your medicine. We got to get connected and start, you know what I'm saying, really connecting ourselves with our cedars, the pine, the spruce. The holly and the laurel. So we got to look into this holly, this laurel, this spruce. So, all right, come on. We could dig on it. They were awake to the end. And to them it was given to always, to be always green. And to be great is for medicine. All right. So now we got some trees to dig on. Men came after the animals and plants. At first, they were only a brother and sister until he struck her with a fish and told her to multiply. <laughs> All right. Look, I can't confirm or deny that this did or didn't happen. That someone got hit with a fish. I mean, is that why, you know, you know, grandma used to always be like, man, if I dream of fish, somebody pregnant. Because what happened when she got struck with this fish? He told her to multiply. And it was and so it was in seven days a child was born to her. And thereafter, every seven days another, and they increased very fast until there was danger that the world could not keep them. So she just had babies every seven days after getting hit with this fish. Then it was made that a woman should have only one child in a year, and it has been so ever since. Oh, I mean, the women have babies every seven days? I, must, I mean, hope he was painless, man. All right, man. So that's how the earth was made. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, this is some quick drop here. What the stars are like. Uh, you about to hear something about these stars like you probably never heard it before. Again, are they myths? Is this play play? Is there some babies in this for us to dig on? You know, let's vibe out, man. Ain't about to get some star drop. You know? main thing you came to do man is have a feeling you know not fill your head with stuff but just have a feeling so if you get a feeling over here you know what i'm saying and then from great researchers that are just drop and drop you get a great feeling then keep feeling good man because the feeling is what's gonna activate you the vibration is what you came for it's what you're here for so keep spreading it keep spreading that's all we're doing is spreading the awareness of our vib vibration so what the stars are like. Alright, let's look at this Cherokee, man. You know, got the AD, man. Come on. There are different opinions about the stars. Some say that they are balls of light. Others say that they are human. But most people say that they are living creatures covered with luminous fur or feathers. So <laughs> he said most people say they are living creatures covered with luminous fur or feathers. I know we've been digging on that Giannini, so, you know, we got these collect, connected sky areas, these gaseous, you know what I'm saying, regions that are shining from, you know, a certain distance, you know, and captured by these telescopes and these, you know what I'm saying, um, concave lenses, upon concave lenses. And remember, your eye, your eye lens is also concave, so you're looking through a concave into a concave, and you're getting globular things and globular 
uh, illusions, globular illusions. And Giannini says there's no global or anything. Now, <laughs> looking at the Cherokee myth, he said most people say that stars are living creatures covered with luminous fur or feathers. All right, let's see what we're talking about. One night, a hunting party camping in the mountains noticed two lights like, like large stars moving along the top of a distant ridge. They wandered and watched until the light disappeared on the other side the next night. And the next, they saw the light again moving along the ridge. And after talking over the matter, decided to go on the morrow and try to learn the cause. In the morning, they started out and went until they came to the ridge where after searching some time, they found two strangers about so large, making a circle with outstretched arms. They found two strange creatures about so large. <laughs> making a circle with outstretched arms with round bodies covered with fine fur or da downy feathers. All right. So, all right, man, I don't know. I wasn't there to confirm or deny this. I'm just dropping it, you know what I mean? We just try to see where this lands, man. Where does this land? So, two, all right, you know, look, man. Look, man. All right. You came for the investigation. We're going to see what does do these things exist do these furry little things and are they stars I, I, I don't know i don't know are they angels i don't know but let's see let's see let's see so in the morning they, they started out and went until they came to the ridge where after searching some time they found two strange creatures about so large making a circle with outstretched arms with round bodies covered with fine fur or downy feathers from which small heads Stuck out like the heads of terrapins, terrapins. Now, you look up into these terrapins, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have some angelic connection with that. All right, so as the breeze played upon these feathers, showers of sparks flew out. So when the wind hit the feathers, they started sparking up and lighting up. All right. The hunters carried the strange creatures back to the camp. I mean, Somehow they got a hold of these things. They carried them back to the camp, intended to take them home to the settlements on their return. They kept them several days and noticed that every night they would grow bright and shine like great stars along. Although by day they were only balls of gray fur, except when the wind stirred and made the sparks fly out. They kept very quiet and no one thought of their trying to escape when on the seventh night they suddenly rose from the ground like balls of fire and were soon above the tops of the trees higher and higher they went while the wandering hunters watched until at last there were only two bright points of light in the dark sky and then the hunters knew that they were stars oh all right man hey man you dig on it you tell me Right. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Miss of the Cherokee, man, by James Mooney. He got the link. He got the link. Now, we dropped some on this. I wanted to, um, you know, flow through it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, definitely, you know, in everything, we dodged the hijack, man, because, you know, we, you know, they're telling us, you know what I'm saying? So, we're getting the breadcrumbs left by the, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> minority report, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, you know, left over, you know what I'm saying? This is not what's being put out there in the majority. So all this stuff is being dug up. We're getting all kinds of stuff coming up now, man. And we're just talking here about the legacy, the legacy of Adam and Eve. And you see again, the table of context, the Adamic problem, a living record. So yeah, man, I'll tell y'all, man, go click that link, subscribe to AD. He yeah, I know he has big plans, man, to keep this, you know, dropping for y'all, man. He's definitely dropping it on us. And it's worth going through, man. So I want to take the time um, to not just, you know, look through all my own stuff, man, but to always dig on all the stuff around us because that's how we grow even faster. That's how we connect to each other, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I all praise for Wild the Creative <laughs> for, for giving us uh, such a wonderful stream, man, to flow in. Yeah, we're just talking Hawaii. So let's read this and let's get to it. 
get to it. Let's get to it. See how much we can cover. You know what I mean? I don't have no plans, man. I'm just fast and loose, man. Let's go. Oh, wow. All right, so why the creator? The prominent name is that of Hawa. Wow, it was the most ancient name for the creator and is easily identified from a Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold or to shape, as in the frame and the shape of the creator of the green earth and the blue sky. Or we're talking framing and we're talking shaping. Okay. Father Dominica the Viso used the Kishay names to refer to the God of the Old Testament. So something happened, man. They found this. These were the most frequently mentioned powers, right? So they found it all over the place, but you don't know anything about it, right? So called Negro. I mean, damn. Who are we? Everything is so called. Until we flow with the primitive verbs of why. Now that's existence. That's vibration. Forming. Molding. Shaping. As time flowed on. And the world fell apart. Different people developed different names for the Father God. For the Creator King of the God. And for other superhuman personalities. The myths show common patterns but the stories and relationships among the gods vary from place to place the tribes remembered the same general arrangement but estrangement led to different details oral deterioration and later literary embellishments eroded a solid core of social memory the myth stories show these common patterns but with divergent embellishments through this study it is not possible to isolate the old names and show evidence which was preserved beyond the disintegrating process of social me memory and the distortions of ancient scribes and their literary accounts. We can now determine the original forms. In chapter 2, I discussed the Anglo-Saxon Aloha with this present form of Hello and the curious parallel of the Hawa, Hawa, Hawaiian island Aloha. This greeting has strong parallels with Eloha or Eloha, the Hebrew name for what they call God, our power, the creator. Furthermore, and I, shall, I shall show the biblical name for the personal God of Israel. Right, now, here's where you got to dodge a hijack because this person trying to push you in this frequency. Yah. But, you know, remember, we're going to go back to this when we talk about the Yah and the Wah. Now, this person wants to push you in the yah way. Wow. So, you know, they're going to try to break it down as a future tense. And, yeah, we're talking about things to come and all that. But, you know, we dodged the idea. Let's go. Translated in many modern English versions of the biblical uh, Bible simply as Lord. All right. See, you know what this Baal is in their Lord. Yah, Baal, Lord. So you see where they're bringing you. But yet, let's go. This name, although not recognized by modern scholarship, is related to Eloha and to Hawa. Also, Eloha, Aloha, Aloha. Forms are found in place names. So you go to Hawaii, Aloha. Right? Aloha, Aloha. And and uh, Ireland and Scotland. So this reminds me a little bit of when we're breaking down the frame and the shape of right. Alam and Kajalam. Right. Alam. the perfect aspect of the root verb ah all right 
So Alam, a more accurate translation for Alam, however, is she who has born children. She, from the perfect aspect of the root verb Al, to bear children. So, you know what I mean? They're going through their own, you know, Hebrew, you know what I'm saying? You know, oh, Hebrew scholar of this, Hebrew, you know, but they don't, these people are always changing, you know what I'm saying? We can't depend on them to teach us, you know, common sense, you know what I'm saying? Vibration. All right, so we see this couple, we see this pairing, we see this union. We know wisdom <laughs> and Solomon go hand in hand. All right, so now we are, you know, getting a connection. So this all, all to bear children. All right, the name of the male god Kajalam signifies, uh, specifically indicates his begetting begotten male offspring. Fray Bartolome de Casas wrote in the 16th century that the people of Guatemala worship as their principal power, the great father, great mother. So the Al, Al, Alam. You see how they split us apart? In Islam, they gave us Alam, Allah. In Christianity, we got God, this male God by himself, walking around by himself. He ain't got no company. He ain't got no woman. He ain't got no feminine. You know what I'm saying? Counterpart, connection. Until we get to the creator of the green earth and creator of the blue sky. Raka, beat out. The expanse of the sky. The sky vault. All oh, to bear children. So let's go. Let's take that in mind. Just keep all that stuff in mind as we build. So they see the all right here. All right. The all oa, the alua. And Ireland and Scotland. So yeah, you know, maybe they're just giving it up to the, you know what I'm saying, a feminine energy or to, you know what I'm saying, wisdom herself. If she knew them, if they knew the creator. But if we're talking about the indigenous Ireland and Scotland, then yeah, they're coming with the indigenous, you know what I'm saying, the connection, the breakdown. Obviously our people got hijacked in many different places in many different ways. So sometimes you get something like the myth of the Cherokee, and you don't know if you're getting a pre-hijack version of it or a latter hijack version of it. So that's why we always, uh, you know, keep our hijack meter high, man, and uh, <laughs> keep it pointed at A, man. Aloha, Aloha in Ireland, Scotland. Uloa, Uloa, Loa in Chile. Loa in Utah. Gotta dig on this Loa in Utah. Loa, Loa in the South Pacific. Sinaloa in Central America, right? Ocalocuchi Swamp in Florida. The last name is formed by the element Ocalawa. Ocochi, similar to Mana Ocochi of the Manakasi River. Many of the Loa forms, Loa forms abound. One other word is also important to the presentation of this chapter, El, the Canaanite word for God. It was used in the Bible, El Shaddai is God Almighty. In Genesis 17, 1, Elu, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani is the famous quote, Matthew 27, 46. Here comes their Jesus, dies to hijack, the train's never late. You're digging on a while, you got, here comes Jesus. <laughs> Matthew twenty seven forty six by Jesus as he hung on the cross, my God, my God, who has forsaken me, I shall now consider some of the Creator evidence. All right, so Koa Kaubab Kaubab El Hawa is one of the most ancient excavation sites in Israel. El Hawa, God Creator. All right. So this L is just like a generic God, even though specifically some have it referred to as their Baal and all the other stuff. And others say it's a generic thing. Or yeah, that's the God creator. That's the creator God. You know what I'm saying? However they're saying it. Hawa, Hawa is the key to, the, to a host of ling linguistic forms. While El, a common Semitic word for God is well remembered in the Bible, Hawa, the ancient name for the creator is not. 
world. So you got L all over the place. But Hawa, the ancient name for the creator, is not remembered. The reason it is simple when the Israelites were given Yahweh, Yahweh, they say during the Exodus, the new name for the creator, they learned to forget the old Hawa. <laughs> so here's when he's going to try to start bringing you towards the Yahweh. Like, oh, that's the new name. You know, it's always some new thing that they're, they're taking your manuscripts. They're digging into your culture and trying to tell you. And try to lead you to a frequency. So, we're going to dig on some of this philology. And we're going to dig on some of this breakdown. And my scholars and my people out there, you know, you know what I'm saying? Share the drop, share the drop. So, when the Israelites were given Y-A-W-A during the Exodus, the new name for the creator. All right. All right. Let's dig on it. They learned to forget the old Hawaii. So, is that old all right, now we have another new and some someone else is calling it old. They no longer remembered Hawa. El Hawa names are scattered around the world. Many of these have coalesced into one word. Alawa is in Nigeria. On Molokai, Molokai in Hawaii Islands, the name is known as Halawa. Halawa. It is found in Halawa, Jordan, and Halawa in the Jubel Mountains of Sudan. Here the L has shifted to Al. Wait a minute. That's why we got, that's why we surfing the wave, man. I mean, we digging on this uh, legacy of Adam and Eve. We digging in the Papu Vo. We digging in the midst of Cherokee. All at the same dang on time. And talking about the flat earth drop. This is all Hawa. This is all our mother. We, we appreciate our mother. We appreciate the energy that Hawa has allowed to rock with us. Our mother to connect all this. That's how we're doing is connecting. So you're seeing a combination. You're seeing a beautiful samba, a beautiful dance. So we're just talking when Al here, the L has shifted to Al. All. And we have here all. To bear children. She who has born children. So it switched to feminine. Is what we are really seeing. Somehow it switched to feminine. Ah, to bear children. The feminine. She who has born children. Alam. 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 Alright. So here the L has shifted to ah. She. Now we're talking about Islam, Islam, and all that, right? We're talking Saudi Arabia, right? We're talking the Jordan, the Middle East. They switched it to she. Then they had their crescent and the moon and their Isis and their queen mother of heaven, which you, some of y'all, just finished celebrating their queen mother of heaven, the same energy that enslaved you for how many centuries in the Arab slave trade? How many centuries did the more sultan enslave you here during this civil war between more and more when Preston John King David was not getting down with the sultan but the sultan was paying you tribute but the sultan wasn't happy paying you tribute so treaties were made we're going to get into these treaties let's go so somehow the L shifted to all, she who has born children, with an H added to the front. Other forms of this name may be Alava province, Spain, and Alava mountains on the Samoan islands in the South Pacific. It is also seen in the Al Hawaya desert in Saudi Arabia. If one attempts to pronounce El Hawa rapidly with 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 accent on the final wa and not on the initial ha, one readily recognizes how the H of Hawa can be slurred into Elawa. Ac accent on the last syllable is practiced in Hebrew and other languages. The Hawa name is found in places without the L. Example, Hawa, Syria, and Hawa, Mongolia. 
Did y'all know about Hawaii and Syria and Hawaii, Mongolia? It is found in Awa Island, Kuwait, Awa, Ethiopia, as well as Awa, Okinawa. We're talking Japan. We're talking Hong Kong. We're talking Wong Kong, Preston John. The Hawa name may also be found in Ava Island in the Bismarck Arch Archipelago in Ava of the Samoan Islands in Ava and Burma, as well as Ava Lahi Channel in the Tongan Islands of the South Pacific. The Awa name in Ethiopia is also given as Ua. If we vocalize Oa, Ua, we find ourselves making a W W sound between the two vowels. The problem of how to spell such sounds is illustrated in the Random House Dictionary of the English Language. In the dictionary section, the name Man Masawa for the seaport in Ethiopia has the Ua form, but the same name in the Gazetteer Gazetteer section. As the form Masawa, Masawa. Numerous other Awa and Hawa names exist. Awa Kai, Awa Wakai, Wakin in New Zealand is a Hawa duplet. There are many others sometimes with O, C, L, or An components. And here's a list, man. So you got the joint, man. Look at all this Hawu Mongolia, Hawi, Hawaiian Islands, Hawi New Zealand. So you see the name, the Hua, Hawa, Hua. So the H U A, Hua, Hawa. All right. Solomon Islands. All right. Solomon Preston John, Solomon Islands. Hua, Hui, Hua, Hua. We got Hua. Kakina, Peru, Hawa, Ak, Akina, Peru, Yaru, Perusalem. We got to dig on this spot, Hawa, Ak, Akina. We got told you about Hebron, Bolivia. All right, Hebron, Bolivia. Remember the great work by Teach Man and the great work by his family in uh, Perusalem, bringing out that Bolivia. Hawa, Kaya. All right. We got the China. We'll be back on this China drop. Hua ha. Hua hai. Hai. Hua hai. Wali, Peru. Another Hawaii la. Hawaii la. Hawaii la. Hawaii la, Peru. Come on, man. Hawaii Islands. All right. We know that. Man, you got Hua ya coqueto. Coqueto, Mexico. So you got the Hua Mexico. The Hua Peru. The Hua China and Peru. Uh, Thailand, come on, man. Just like you got Moshi, Moses everywhere. And this goes on. You got Scotland. Mula, Oa, Oa, Hoa, Oa. So Oa, Ua, Haya, Hawa. All right. Let's keep going. All over the place. The Hua name is pronounced Hawa. So we see H O A, it's still pronounced Hawa. Others are varying spellings. Hua Hua, Hawa Hawa, Hawa Hawa, Hawa Hawa. River in Nicaragua is parallel with the Hui, Hua Hui, Tenag, Tenango in Guatemala, and the Chi Hua Hua, Hua, Yuapin, Hua Mantle, Mantla, Hua Kekula, Hua Huet Lanan. And Hawaii forms in Meshi, Mexico, Mexica, Meshi, Moshe, Meshi, Moshe, Mexico. In the ancient Mexican language, Hawaii, 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 Hawaii is pronounced Hawaii, Hawaii. So Hawaii, 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 Hawaii is <laughs> met great antiquity. It met great antiquity, ancient head of days. Great antiqu antiquity. Many times the initial symbol is lost to leave a simple wa or wai, like Hawaii. 
This is illustrated by the American in Indian tribal name Hawalapai, also known as Walapai. So now you see the Wa. So you know, like I say, he's gonna try to bring you over to the uh <laughs> to the Yahweh's <coughs> like the Yah or the Y's, you know what I'm saying, giving it some future, but in that case, so with the W. So instead of saying Yahweh, you can either be saying Wa 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 or Wa Wa. And he broke down already that the Wa was a shortened version of the creator's name, like they were saying the Yah is, but you also have the Wa. So why are they stuck on the Y A H? Why are they stuck on the Y A H? Could it be? You know, we're just surfing the wave, but why are they stuck on the Y A H? How they say that Yahweh? What was that? Let's just put the Yahweh back in etymology. We done did it before. We're doing it again. So he's going to try to sell you on the Yahweh's, right? Yahweh, 1869. So you're going to try to put it together with the Hebrew, but really you're just trying to push the 1869 agenda. Hypothetical reconstruction of the Tetragrammaton YHWH. Based on the assumption of the Tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the Hebrew verb Hawa, Hawa, earlier form of Heya, was, in the sense of the one who is the existing. But what's up with this Ya? I mean, why would they have you stuck on Y A H and not W A H? All right, so we got this Jehovah, Jehovah. Let me get it here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exclamation of defiance or dismissal. So you got Ja. Ja is 1530s in etymology. Yeah. Is an exclamation of defiance or dismissal. I mean, so we're seeing this different type of substantiating situations. And you remember these joints? Remember this one, man, Lot to Isaac? Now, this is your, you know what I'm saying? What we're talking about, your immovable earth. This is your ice wall. Where's Antarctica? Where's Antarctica? <coughs> Antarctica surrounds you. You have a sun here. You have a sun outside of the barrier. You have passages through it. You have more lands like Admiral Byrd said in the 40s on live national television. We found another piece of land the size of America. Which one? I mean, which one? We're just talking about perspective. Which one? Which one, Admiral Byrd? We're just talking perspective, right? Admiral Byrd, which one? I mean, even the Japanese maps will tell you that. In Japan, coming out the caves, here's your barrier. All right, we'll get back to it. But let's just stick on this ya, Y-A-H, Y-A-H. Now, this is in the language of hijacks. You see Thoth, the moving island. You see the Set and Anubis. You see the Egyptian Atlantis connection. You see the Baal or Baal or Baal and Sol. You see their soul, you see their ya and ya's, all connected with their ra and their summer gate of ra and ya. And you don't think that maybe it's an exclamation of defiance or dismissal? Ya? All right, I don't know. Let's ask some questions, man. So when there's ya's, there's also the wa. Now let's keep reading. All these names to dig in the Manawa, I didn't Manahawa. Let's go, let's go. This form is also found many places with an A suffix. There is Walawa, Hawa, El Hawa Mountains. Oh, let me go back. Don't forget about the Wawa. In Utah, these mountains, the Wawa Mountains, all right, all right, let's go. Walla Walla, Washington, Walla Walla, 
Aita hawa ela ela wala wa hawa ela hawa ela Australia as well as wal 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 way wal why Afghanistan and others all right so you got the walla wallas talking about the same joy these many different forms of the worldwide hawa name find parallels in mythology uwa was number one of the Egyptian guys, the one guy, Ua. Ua, Ua was the only one, the one only, the one and only, the one without the second, the creator of all things that are. So what you're finding are the breadcrumbs of the drop that no one, you know what I'm saying, discusses, you know what I'm saying. As you know, these shepherd kings, as you know, these shepherd kings and these Vikings and these six Hyksos, these Vikings is VI six King Hyksos. <laughs> As you know, we have our trail all throughout Egypt with Joseph. You know what I'm saying? So when you see Egypt, don't go, oh shit. Nah, man. We know we were there, so we know our creator's name has to be around there. And you had this ooh ah. Alright. Alright, don't dodge the hijack. On the American continent. Hawaneu was the Iroki name for the great spirit. Whoa. Whoa. So the Iroquois in America, the copper color race is found here by the Europeans. Remember that? The Erica, Iroquois called the great spirit Hawaneu. And Awahili, Awa, Awahili was the Cherokee name for the great sacred eagle. <laughs> All right, myths of the Cherokee, here we go. According to the story told to the early white explorers, Hiawatha, remember the Hiawatha? In the OSB, we want to be back in that, man. Hiawatha was the name of an outstanding Mohawk. Chief, mm, who lived a few centuries before their arrival. Ah, how's that connecting with, you know, saying your foundational legends of your forefathers? Iwata. Uh, what else was he called in the um, book of the beginnings? You know, Paco dropped it on his. Uh, uh, Hua. Who was that? Might still have it up. Might still have it up. Who am I? Who am I? Yeah, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Let me just see if we can get that. So you got the yas and the wise. There we go. You got to put all that in. <clears throat> They're making this work for it, y'all. Making this work. So, love to Paco, man. Dropping this on us, man. You know, we just doing our thing. Don't mind us, man. We just doing our thing. Hua ma. All right. Now, this uh, particular author, Masse, is connecting Joshua and Quetzalcoatl. And this Hua ma. All right. Hua ma with Moses. Now, check it. They were all about the Toltecs. Remember Sylvanus Toltecs? Remember Kalevus? All the plays. Ashu and Anhar in Egyptian mythology. Right? And Moses and Joshua conducted their people with the... Moses and Joshua conducted their people with the solar orb round the circle of signs overcoming the opposing power postulated by the early men. So in the Toltec mythology, Shui, Mak, or Hua, Hua, H U E Hua Hawa Hawa Ma Hawa H U E Hua Hawa Matzin and Kitzikotu conducted their people through the pilgrimage and wanderings recording in the picture writings. So just as Moses and Joshua, you have Hawa Hawa Mak Moses and Kitzikotu Joshua Huey Mak. Hawa Mak, like Moses, 
wrote the code of laws for the nations. Hawa ma, hawa, hawa ma. Just like Moses, so this is inferring that they're the same, writing the codes for the nation and conducting the civil government. Kitsikuotu in relation to Hawa Ma plays the part of Joshua. Kitsikuotu Joshua when Kitsikuotu began to give the laws instead of Hawa Ma. Alright, when Joshua led you into your promised land. Hawa Shua. He sent a cry to the top of the mountain of Alcry, whose voice could be heard for 3,000 miles. Joshua followed Moses as the leader of Israel and instructed the people to go up against Jericho, his mountain of Alcry, and assail it with the shout that ought to have been heard at a great, at an equal distance, and it was loud enough to make the walls fall flat. The red old, the old red man, Hawa Hawa La Palan, Hawa Hawa La Palan was the name of the original home in the north from which the Toltecs migrated. Sylvanus Toltecsus, Solomon the Builder. They call him Solomon the Builder or Sylvanus Toltecsus. We're talking Calabus, we're talking the 700s. Their leader, Kitsikoto, wore a long robe marked with crosses. Oh, is that Jesus? Or are they hijacking the indigenous drop? The sign identifies him as the one who crosses so that identified him as the one who is crossing we're talking Moses we're talking Joshua crossing into the promised land and a cross signifying him crossing into the promised land and now you think Jesus this is what the Mormons did when they tried to connect kids to to they connected him with Jesus <laughs> which Joshua their Joshua Yeshua they said or your Yahshua, Hawashua. That's Paco set. <laughs> Which one you want? <laughs> Their way or Paco way? Oh, man, love to the family, man. Beautiful thing. Oh, wow. All right, so Kitsikoto attained the land of promise. So Kitsikoto attained the land of promise. And in his golden reign, an era of wheat grew so large that one man could hardly carry it. Joshua led the people into the land flowing with milk and honey, where a single bunch of grapes was a load for two men. Moses is placed in a cleft of a rock while the Lord goes by, while Hawa goes by, and tradition asserts the print of his body to have been engraved in the stone visible to this day. The impressions of the hand of Hawa Mak is likewise said to have been stamped in a rock. Do you see the connection? We're talking frame and shape, man. We're talking the midst of the Cherokee, man. We're talking Uwa, Hawa, the Cherokee. Hawa, Neu was the Iroquois name for the great spirit on the American continent. You know who the Americans are. Get it like it's the first time, man. American, a Native of America, originally applied to the original or copper colored race Negro. So the title American belongs to the copper colored race found here by the European. But now those titles are taken and applied to the descendants of Europeans born here. All right. That's all I want. I'm out. Let's go. About to get ready, man. Oh, man, we got a little time, man, before we make our dish, man. We good. We good. So we're talking about Hiawatha. Hawatha. Hey, I. Hey, I. Ai Hawata, Ai Hawata, suggesting that perhaps the Indian memory confused a tribal hero with an early god. Hmm, tribal hero. Most Moses the founder, Mosak the founder, tribal hero. Nene Hawa, yeah, Hawaya was a Choctaw name meaning bending hill. Uh oh. The place of the emergence, but this name was also used for the creator. Hawaya. Ha. In these examples, we see the simple Hawa for simple primitive root. If we consider El Hawa, we can find another parallel. Did Eloha, the Hebrew name, the Hebrew name for God, derived from El Hawa? 
Uh, how are they related before we examine the connection in detail? Consider other Eloha, Eloha names which appear in mythology. Yana Ula, Ulaha was a Pueblo Indian name for the high priest. First sent down to earth by the creator. Yana Oluha was the Pueblo name, first people name for the high priest, first sent down to earth by the creator. Did you know? This role is similar to that of Melchizedek in Psalms 110. A high priest forever, one commissioned by. Oh, now they just, after all that Hawa, it's Yahweh. <laughs> after all that Hawa, it's Yah, exclamation of defiance or dismissal. It's Yahweh. <clears throat> Hypothetical from 1869 reconstruction. Based on the assumption of the tetragrammaton is the imperfective of the Hebrew verb Hawa. Earlier form of hey yeah now you're gonna try to call this the future tense man but we're looking at the 1869 tense man we're looking at what they're saying is yeah is this exclamation of defiance man and we're wondering why it's even in the maps of the hijacks man yeah yeah you don't see Hawaii called in Hawaii some foreign moon no. So what are they saying with this exclamation of defiance? So let's keep going. <clears throat> Yana is the Hebrew way to pronounce a name familiar to all of us. Jonah, who was swallowed by a well, the name Yana means dove, a symbol of peace. We are promised the prince of peace, but many believe with Jesus. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Trains never late. Dr. Hijack. Yana Ula, Ulua was the dove of Eloha. All right. If we return back across the Atlantic <coughs> to the Eastern Mediterranean, we find that Haloa was a pagan spring festival in ancient Greece, celebrated at the time of the vernal equinox, equivalent to the Jewish Passover and the Christian Easter. It was celebrated in honor of Persephone, the personification of spring, who returned each spring from her abode in the, nether in the netherworld. The Greek festival was also celebrated in honor of Demeter, the goddess of fertility and protector of marriage and the social order. But Dionysus, the god of fertility, was not forgotten, was honored. He was honored also with the celebration. <coughs> and we, as we see, he was a memory of Adam. As we shall see, he was a memory of Adam. The Greeks remembered the Eloa name other ways, Alodai, Alodai were Otis and Iphilites, the giant twins of Poseidon and Ephemedia. And we know that the Greeks are hijacking everything. They hijacked the Greek guy. They hijacked the Egyptian guy. They hijacked it. So what are they hijacking here? The Elo Elodai were Otis and Ephiates. You know, yeah, all right. The giant twin sons of Poseidon and Ephemedia. Ephemedia later married Alois, who became foster father of the twins, Alois is the Greek form of Eloa, with the characteristics Greeks ending. If the twins were adopted by God, they became stepchildren of God and hence sons of God. All right. The clue behind all these names and word forms and place names, with mythological gods and the Hebrew name for God, is found in conjunction of the Hebrew word Heya to be to exist. All right. So we're going to talk about. The conjunction, right? <clears throat> in conjunction of the Hebrew word heya, to be, to exist. So you're talking about tenses, is what we're saying. In the PL, Payel, form the word he, hawa, number one, means to form, to mold, again, to shape. The imperative is the masculine singular, literally, is form, mold. Hawa is the great molder. Hawa is the great molder, shaper, the one who fashions and forms. He is the creator. But they're going to leave you with that. <laughs> so who's the framer? All right, you got to find the framer on your own, wisdom of Solomon. He is the creator. Note that I took two liberties in the trans tabulation. The current Hebrew pronunciation would use the V instead of 
a W in the words, the current Hebrew pronunciation. We use V and not W, so you see how this Yiddish is hijacking your frequency. They're not using the W, they're using the V for their spells. This is a common sound shift. By showing a W, we see how well the Hebrew word explains the abundant planetary existence. I also use A as an ending on some words rather than A. A common substitution not clearly distinguished by human scholars. From examination of the verb tabulation, we can see how the Hebrew word for God may have been ar arisen. El married with Hoa became Loa. Note that in the pronunciation of many of Oa sounds, it is easy to form the glottal, glottal stop, a shorten, shortening of the O to break it from easy flow with the A. Ah. This then tends to make Eloa, El Oa, and hence Eloa, and we find it in the Hawaiian Aloha and other Oa names. The tabulation shows many interesting forms. The Indian name Iwata, Hawata, Hey Hawa, Hayawata is commonly pronounced Hayawata. In the Indian form, it is Haya Hawata. We can see that Haya or Heya is the basic root of the Hebrew verb, while Hawa is the PL, whatever that is, the PL form is the creator. Heya Hawata comes directly out of the Hebrew verbs. Place names in addition to those tabulated above are also evident. Mihawa is found in Mahuva, India. Haya, Hauhua, and other forms are also explained. All right, so it's breaking down the Hiawatha name as Hayawatha or Hayahawatha. Hayawatha, all right. It's found in Mahuva, India. Hawa, Hayahawa. And other forms are also explained. Two outstanding ones are Hawani and Tihawana. <coughs> uh oh, now you got Tijuana. Tihawana. <laughs> wow. Hawana is found in Havana, Cuba. Remember Columbus looking for the Grand Khan? Remember looking for the Grand Khan in Cuba? The Israelite king in Hawa, Hawa. Havana, 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 Havana Channel, New Caledonia, as well as Havana, Nevela, Salem. Tijuana is found in Tijuana, Mexico. Other names are Havana, oil field in Iraq, Awanu, New <coughs> Zealand, and Uwana, Syria. The Tijuana may also be found in Taiwan and Taiyun, China. Wow, everywhere. Wow. In Mexico, in Tihuacan. Tihuahawakan. Ah, Tihuacan. Tihuacan. Hawakan. Tihuanapat. Tepet. Tehui Hawapango. Without the terminal A, this name may show in Hua in New Caledonia as well as Hua. Hua in New Guiana and Hua Ke Vietnam. In the New World, we find places such as Hawa Hawa Kanale, Hawa Keo, Hua Kaka, and Hua Nuko in Peru and Bolivia. Peru Salem. Hebron. Let's go. In the PL verb, we find Hawa Ahawa. This Form may be found in Ahua O Haua Hu Ara Ahu Ahaua. Try, man. Doing it, man. I'm doing it for you. <laughs> Lake Ahua and Ahuapo, all of New Zealand, as well as Ahua and Fiji Islands. One might also add Ahua Ua Oahu of the Hawaiian Islands, but the state of Iowa. Uh oh. In the United States, it's shown in the earlier form, Hawa. Iowa is Hawa. Did y'all know that? So you got Utah and Utah. And Iowa is Hawa, which would be Hawa or Hawa, Hawa, directly from the tabulation. Numerous 
other names could be found searching for atlases. The tabulation also explains other evidence from the Bible. The name for the God most commonly used in the Bible is not the singular form Eloah, but rather the plural tips Al Elohim, Elohim. This is found directly in plural Kal, present tense, Hoim, Hawim, corresponding to the singular Hawe. All we do is add L to the front. In Exodus 3, Moses was confronted by God. A conversation ensued in which God commanded Moses to go speak for him to the people of Israel. Moses, highly reluctant to take on such commission, and apparently as part of his attempt to avoid the duty, asked God how he, Moses, is supposed to identify God to his people. God, Hawa, is provoked to tell Moses, I am who I am. He shall tell the Hebrews, I am, have sent thee, has sent him. The phrase I am who I am literally translates Aye Ashe Aye is the first person male single in the form call number nine at the tabulation I am. But God is not satisfied that Moses shall tell the people I am as in him. This was too ordinary. Everyone knows that God is, and everyone knows that God is that He exists. Rather, Moses should tell the people, uh oh, Yahweh. <laughs> Alright, so this is where, you know, this is when they're trying to put the Yahs in the Yahweh. So let's see, let's go. The God of his fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob sent him. This was to be his name. The Yahweh was to be remembered throughout all the generations. Alright, so here comes their Jesus. Alright, so you know, we got some good babies out of this, man. The name is significant. It is third person, male singular of the form, future form, PL, PL, number 10. And that's when they're putting the Y, how, yeah. And now, you know, that's when you, you got to dig on. You got to, you know what I'm saying, see where they're adding this in to switch your frequency. He shall create. God wanted to be known as the one who not only was, aye, nor as the one who had created a Y, but as the one who would create. Alright. <laughs> okay. So he said, nah, man. Put the yah in front, man. Put the exclamation of, look how hard they're trying to get you into the exclamation of defiance or dismissal. So if you surf the wave and if you're just looking at etymology and you look up yah and you see, oh, that's an exclamation of defiance or dismissal. And then you zoom, you know, zoom in, you see the maps with the ya yas and the ra ras all connected as one. Exclamation of defiance. And then they're trying to get you to the Yahweh's and in, in the etymology of Yahweh. It says it's from the imperfective of the Hebrew verb Hawa. Earlier form of Haya. It's not kicking. Oh, man, this is futuristic, man. But, you know, that's when, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's when it's all happening. So he was taking command of the planet, had been lost in the spiritual darkness of celestial rebellions. Now he would create in a way that would stand in the memorial throughout the ages of universal time. I mean, come on now. As soon as we went to the Yahweh's, now we're talking about memorials of universal time. All right, this discussion now brings us to Jesus' name. Here we go. It is commonly thought to derive from the Hebrew Joshua. Jesus in Greek is pronounced Jesus. Jesus. Sus is swine. Eshua is swine in Greek. With the creator named his son after swine. Jesus. Zeus. Zeus. This is Zeus. And is commonly vocalized that way among modern Spanish people. One difficulty in the eval. Why did it come over into Greek as an E? Not an O, Yahshua, Yoshua, which one, which Joshua, get to go to? Oh no, he's talking about their hijack, might have yielded Jesus, not Jesus. Scholars believe that the name Yahshua derives from Yehoshua, a derivative form of Yehosha, which is confessed, confused with Yehoshaya, Hushaya. Yehoshaya is found in 1 Samuel 17, 47, 
Psalms 116.6, it means he will say, Yehosha Heya, Yehosha Heya, in the Hippel Hippel, third person, masculine future of Yasha to save in the Yehosha uh, form. It is thought the name may derive from the combination of, they put in a Y, Hawa, and Yasha. He will create, he will save. So this is how they're playing with the language. This is their, you know what I'm saying, uh, Yiddish, you know what I mean, remake. <laughs> and they, they, they want to teach you into, oh, this is, no, nah, this is past, this is future, this is present. When it comes to your creator, they want to put the why. This is how they're selling it. So, you know, you can dig on it here. But there's another form that adds further confusion. It's the yesh used adverbially, ad adverbially or as the copula for the verb hey the yesh all right to stand out or to exist strong shows it used as there are he is i have and so on with hawa the inflected form of hey yesh hawa could easily mean he is the creator and this is jesus <laughs> oh man we're doing good man all right, man, then it just breaks down the tablet, you know, the tabulation that you can kind of go on and get your study on, man. So, you know, and that's when they try to put you with the yeah, highways and the yeah, Yahweh's and all that stuff like that. And it doesn't take you to do too much recon and know that they're getting it from the Hebrew verb of why. And that they're coming up with this and marching this into their fruition in 1869. That's why all of them may be yelling it because of this. That's coming from Hawaii. But because they've been, you know, digging on it for so long, they got to, you know, they got to dig on it. But you go back to your root, the great father and great mother above the barrier. You go back to your framer and your shaper, creator of the green earth.